Well, hello everybody. I hope you all are having a great weekend. It is Saturday and I really intended to make this video a few days ago. Um, yesterday actually, so not a few days, just a day before. But it has been incredibly busy. Yesterday I spent the entire day baking uh, because today I was setting up at our local hardware store. I sold baked goods and some potatoes that I had. So it was just a really busy day and I wasn't able to get outside to make a video for you. So here I am today. I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on the RNC National Convention. I watched the first night and the last night and heard bits and pieces of the in-between. Um, and then, you know, just have another conversation with you guys. So that's what we like to do around here. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, the RNC National Convention was fire. It was straight fire. Um, I love the new tone. The new tone is humble. And I think it's, it's doing exactly what we need. I think it is open arms, inviting everybody in saying, listen, we got to heal this nation and we have to do so by kindness and understanding. And we're going to move forward because we're not just for us. Like Donald Trump said, I'm not here for 50%. I'm here for a hundred percent. We all need to come together. Um, I understand, you know, there's going to be extremists that on both sides that are never satisfied and you can't speak to them because no matter what, they're way out in left field. Like all common sense has kind of escaped and, you know, you're just never going to be able to get through to them. Um, I don't want to say it's a lost cause, but it, you might as well run full force into a brick wall because you'll have about the same results. Um, but I think that these speeches were, um, really, really wonderful for the majority of everybody else that's kind of in the center on both sides. I just want to make a note of this, that there are, there's close to 2000 comments on my, um, video for the rally from Donald Trump's rally. And I encourage you guys to go scroll through those. Now I have deleted some nasty comments. They're just really bizarre. And so, but that might have only been eight or 10 comments out of 2000. So if you really wanna get a good insight on not just what our country feels, but around the world, I've had people reach out from every corner of the world everybody has reached out and said that they are here in support they love donald trump as well and um so if you really want to get a really fresh revitalization revitalization and and really you know start your weekend off feeling really good about it uh go read those comments because they're powerful and they're strong and there are so many of us that really do feel the exact same way we don't want to push people away we want people to see the world the way we see it in a sense, we almost see things, you know, we, we want to see things through rose colored glasses. Of course, right now it's very difficult because the world is a hard place and um, it's not peachy keen, you know, but we see a world where it can be and that's where we want to go. Uh, and I think that that is the general ideals that are now being presented from the Republican party moving forward after the incident that happened a week ago. I feel like the tone is somber and humble and it's speaking to unity, which is what we need. It's what this world needs. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I think moving forward. I, I, I loved, there were certain people that I loved. Now I said in my one video that I, I'm a little bit of a metalhead, so I was so happy to see Kid Rock there. I know some of you guys don't like him. Don't come for me. I still love him. Um, but he was there and he performed and I thought that was great. Uh, I really loved Tucker Carlson's speech. I thought that was fantastic. Um, Don Jr. His speech was amazing. Uh, I really loved listening to Vivek. I know I'm probably saying that wrong. My Pittsburghese is showing. I apologize. He was fantastic. But I'll tell you what, the 80s, 90s kidding me was absolutely loving Hulk Hogan. When he ripped his shirt off, I was screaming. I thought it was fantastic. Hulk Hogan was uh, one of my grandfather's very favorite wrestlers. Uh, we were definitely Hulkamania back in the day. So that was really fun to see. It was like 
going to a rock show. And honestly, it wasn't lost on me that it was a little bit, how do I say, entertainment. And there was a part of me that said, I don't know if politics should be this entertaining. However, I do think that the reason they're trying to do that is because they're trying to reach more people. So while I was a little bit like, mm, it's a little bit kind of like TV shows, you know, it was a little bit, little bit too on the entertainment side, I understand the need for it. And personally, I really enjoyed it. So I didn't, I didn't linger in that mindset too long. I really think that the party has come together for the most part. Even if they don't want to come together, I think they are coming together. They sense the need for unity. And this is a runaway freight train, guys. I mean, this is, aside from something absolute catastrophic, which almost happened last Saturday, which could still happen in the future. Hey, we're not in the, we're not in the, the blue here, okay? Um, this is a runaway freight train. If everything goes the way that it should go, this is a clear victory. Um, I did want to mention that there is news that Joe Biden is expected to drop out of the race, not not leave the presidency, but drop out of the race. That announcement is supposed to be made tomorrow. We'll see if that's true. This was information that was leaked from the White House. Uh, he's also said to not endorse Kamala. Kamala? Kamala? Anyways, um, he's said that he, he's not going to endorse her. So, I have some things I want to talk to on that note because, in a sense, he almost has to. There's a financial reason why he has to, because all of their financial endorsements will disappear if either he or Harris is not on the ticket, because that's who those donors donated money to. So if both of those people disappear, all of that money is gone. It has to be returned. Not to say that that couldn't be sent back into the next candidate, but I believe it's something like a six month turnaround that it would take for them to get their money back. So that's not good. But also imagine the subset of people that they would offend if they get rid of Kamala. Kamala how do you even say her name? Kamala, 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 Kamala. Anyways, if they got rid of Ms. Harris, imagine the group of people they would be offending the most. And that is one of their largest subsets of faithful fans. We're talking like your, your feminists, uh, which is a conversation for another day, okay? I, I don't dig feminists. I'm a strong, independent woman, and I hate feminists. <laughs> we'll talk about that another time. Um, you're, you're going to get rid of all of those. You're going to get rid of the extreme left because they're going to be like, hey, this could have been our first female president and she would have been black to boot. You know, that fits their narrative. To the rest of us, we don't care. We just want the most qualified person. We don't care what criteria that looks like as long as you're qualified we that's what we want i don't care if you're purple you know if if you're qualified for the job we want you we don't want somebody that has the same quote that she uses over and over and over again no matter what the circumstance but i digress um <laughs> so they're going to really upset that subset of people they're going to abandon those faithful voters that they do have by getting rid of her off the ticket then there's also the question of who would they even replace her with? Gavin Newsom. Yeah, because the entire world wants California as their role model. Um, no, no, no. I, I, California, guys. I know the people that are watching this channel, but the rest of California, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? You got the highest homeless population. It's just a mess. I think um, it's just a mess. Nobody wants Gavin Newsom for president. But who else? Um, there is talk that Kamala could run with Shapiro, which is our governor. That presents its own problem, but I don't think it's that big of a problem right now because obviously we supposedly voted Shapiro in. Um, I was not voting for Shapiro. I voted for Doug Mastriano. He's a wonderful patriot. If you guys do not know who he is, please go find him. He is fabulous. Um, and it was kind of, in my opinion, a close race. And I really think he probably should have won it, but uh, we will never know. 
and that's just what it is. But if Shapiro ran for VP, you know, you're looking at potentially losing the state of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is a key state. If Trump wins Pennsylvania, he really doesn't need to win any other state. He's pretty much got it in the bag. So if we take Pennsylvania away, it's risky. However, right now it's looking like he may have 331 of those votes that he needs. That's what analysts are saying. Some are even saying as far as 370 some. Uh, so it really looks like no matter what they do, it's, it's the polling shows that we're just skyrocketing. We're leaving them in the dust. So that gives me a lot of hope and a lot of, um, just a lot of hope. And I see a lot of people that are saying, I am registered a Democrat. I was registered a Democrat and I am voting for Trump that maybe the first time, maybe the third time. Um, again, I think this goes far beyond party lines because you can have different party affiliations and not agree with what's going on in your party because parties, they're really changing. They're fluid. They kind of keep moving and, and growing and they're never steady. And really now Republicans are the party that my grandparents would have most identified with because it's becoming the party of the working class, the blue collar, you know, and previously that was the Democrat party. So we're really morphing and, and moving along. So you're going to find a lot of people that are center left and they're now morphing over onto our side because they just can't stomach what's become of their party. So that is a beautiful thing. I just, um, I just, I really want to give this message out there that, you know, this movement is really working and we just need to keep the tone. We need to keep that tone of humbleness, of somber, and and really just trying to pull people together. I think it's, it's really gonna be beautiful. And one other thing before I get off of here, uh, I noticed, of course, a week ago when I made that video, I said, if you agree with what happened, then you can exit my life. I did notice that there were some people that did exit and that's fine don't let the door hit you where the good lord split you that's what my grammy always used to say but um had i not voiced my opinion these people would still be around and i think it's funny because i have not changed at all who i am as a person i just posted one thing that they didn't like whereas they liked me before, but because I was vocal about how I felt, they abandoned ship. That's fine. And I'm, I'm good with that. I'm never going to be hurt or upset or distraught because somebody chose to exit based on my political views. Um, and I want you guys to all feel that same way too. You have a big family here. We're all in this together. Um, and let those people get up and leave it doesn't just because you voice your view doesn't change who you are as a human being if you're a good person and you try to help people and you're kind and you're courteous that doesn't change because you voiced your views but feel sorry for those that do get up and leave your life because they're the ones that are missing out they're missing your kindness your smile your generosity they chose to leave that behind just because they're too stubborn to see that differences of opinions are okay. And so that's pretty much all I wanted to get out today. Um, I have a, a, a busy weekend around the farm here. I, like I said, I just got back from selling baked goods. I'm sitting here in my potager garden bed, very distraught, <laughs> but I will make a video about that. Let's just say I'm going to war with the deer population. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll make a homestead video covering all of that either tonight or tomorrow depending on when I have time because I have to run to the rural king to get some feed but yeah I hope this video finds you all well I hope we're all hanging in there I'm encouraged I'm encouraged I'm energized I am hopeful I'm a bit pensive just because we don't know what's going to happen we don't know if there's going to be another attempt we don't know if we're going to descend into world war three we don't know if yesterday's um collapse of the internet for you know 
the, what was it? The airlines and doctors and pharmacies and things like that. We don't know if that was a test run. These are all theories that are thrown out there. Um, and we won't say conspiracy theories because conspiracy theories are just, they're just things that will become fact in a few months. So I, I don't want to call them conspiracies. They're just theories that are out there right now. Um, so we really don't know what is coming down the pipeline, but just know that right now everything looks really, really good. And yeah, we are going to see what happens. So that's going to do it for today, guys. I'm going to get in the house. I'm going to put some of the loaves of bread I didn't sell into the freezer and probably get some dinner going. I hope you guys have a great day and we will see you in the next video. Bye.